Hi guys, uh, thank you for jumping on our Accelerate Alumni Success Story. Uh, my name is Jen Jones. I'm the VP of Career Development. I'm super excited today to introduce Jackie. Um, Jackie's our Director of Career Development for our North Point Accelerate Center, and she is going to introduce you to Christian Lezer. Okay, thanks Jen. Thanks everybody for being here. I'm so excited to go ahead and do this Accelerate Success story uh, with Christian Lezer. Uh, Christian didn't start that long ago and yet Christian is selling like hotcakes. So I wanna be able to let him tell you a little bit about himself and I'll ask some questions. If you have any questions for Christian, please do, you know, I guess throw it in the chat also and that would be much easier for us to kind of control all the uh, questions. Okay, um, in the meantime, I just want to go ahead and get started. So this way we have, we can use, make good use of our time. Okay, so Christian, when I first started with Christian, um, he was like the quietest guy in class. So, <laughs> but honestly, I think he was like a sponge. So he took everything he learned from Accelerate and he really applied it. And I'm so very proud of him. Um, so Christian, why don't you go ahead and just uh, tell us a little bit about yourself and why you went, got ahead, you know, got started in real estate. Yeah, so I mean, real estate's always something I've kind of been interested in. So like I'm from uh, Clearfield, Pennsylvania, which is about 45 minutes west of State College. Um, I went to uh, Boston College and the University of Central, well, I went to Boston College originally on a football scholarship, um, played there for three years then transferred to the University of Central Florida. Uh, finished up there uh, after college. I lived in Florida for another year and kind of did stuff with uh, like building materials and then uh, got into, um, came up here, moved to Lancaster, uh, started working at Leather Lumber, which is my father's company in building materials and kind of like new home builds and stuff like that. So I always kind of had like an interest in real estate and not in real estate directly, but kind of like in that category. And then um, after being in Leather Lumber for two years, I kind of decided that it wasn't really what I wanted to do long term. <laughs> and um, like I said, I already had an interest in real estate. So I got my real estate license, um, interviewed with uh, a few different brokerages and then decided that uh, Berkshire Hathaway kind of offered the best uh, training program and kind of foundation to get started in real estate. So I uh, made the jump and you know, it's been the best decision I've ever made so far. That's awesome. That is so awesome. So why don't you just tell us a little bit about like, what does a day in the life of Christian look like? <laughs> yeah. Um, so every day is kind of different. It really depends on like what I have to do. You know, if I have showings, if I have to do contracts, or, you know, if I have to meet with clients and different things like that, listing appointments or whatever. But, you know, most of the time I try to kind of have like a certain building blocks every day that I try to do, you know, from waking up in the morning to like kind of, you know, email text whatever I had kind of from the day before that I had to take care of I kind of take care of that first thing in the day and then I kind of transition to doing like prospecting different things like that whether it be on social media you know sending out personalized note cards you know different things like that or making phone calls to clients that you know I had to call and then usually kind of midday is when I have like showings or, or contracts and things like that that I would have to do um and obviously that sometimes it's subjective to the day because sometimes that's sprinkled throughout the day and then uh, usually at night again i do a lot of stuff on social media wise because i think that's pretty much the most time when people are active on social media like buyers and, and prospects usually it's in the morning from probably like right before work uh, around lunchtime and then in the evening from like 6 p.m on is a real hot spot to get a hold of them so uh I, i'll do like a lot of social media stuff at night and i usually do that for like a couple hours um, okay. and, and so far that's been the biggest thing for me is social media. And when I say social media, I'm talking like Facebook and Instagram with Facebook being by far the biggest one. Really? Yeah. I'm not surprised. Yeah. Right. Okay. Great. So, um, what, what are primarily the social media platforms that other than Facebook and I mean, do you just primarily use Facebook and Instagram or well, I, mean, I use Twitter? I don't really use Twitter for you know, I mean, there's Facebook, Twitter, Instagram are kind of the big three in terms of social media. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, some people you use some other stuff. I mean, if you're going to use like LinkedIn and stuff like that, I don't typically do that. Um, Instagram's a decent one too. Instagram's probably the second best to me. Um, but I, I don't really use Twitter because Twitter is kind of 
a different world. Um, a majority of the buyers I get are on Facebook though. Um, from the realtor page, you know, posting pictures of different real estate, you know, running, you know, targeted social media ads to different buyers and sellers. Um, but yeah, Facebook is definitely the biggest one to me that I personally use that I've had a lot of success with. I mean, Instagram's too, it's just a different setup with Instagram. Like Instagram's like a little bit harder to kind of gain a, a following, like, you know, organically to kind of message people organically. Cause if they don't follow you, the message is going to be blocked or something like, you know what I mean? So it's a little bit harder to do things on Instagram than it is on Facebook. So okay, Christian, so, what, yeah, one question I have is like, in terms of Instagram and, and, and Facebook, what kind of content are you posting? Do you post the same thing on both? Is it different content? Like what's, what's your goal in terms of content in relation to the audience and the platform you're using? Um, so it really depends what I have going on. Like I like to do a lot of things where I'll post about the homes we put under contract or have sold or like settlements and different things like that. Um, if I have like a new listing or something, obviously I'll post it on social media. It's very important in my opinion to only post things like if it's like clear kind of has a kind of an end goal with it. You know what I mean? Like I don't post things and this is me personally. Um, cause I used to run the social media, you know, at, at, for the Lesser lumber, which is a pretty big company too. And for me personally, I don't like posting things that says just like, you know, happy Monday or things like that. Like I, I kind of post things that will have an end goal to kind of, you know, get me prospects or different things like that. Um, kind of what you were saying, like posting like new homes, listings, different things like that. Cause that's where a lot of people will end up sharing the post. And then every time they share all their viewers, see it and so on, it's kind of becomes a trickle effect down the line. Um, and the more you get your name out there, the more they can see your listing or, the, or that you're a real estate agent, the better it is for me long-term. And what market areas are you covering? In terms of like when I run social media ads or just? Yeah, social media ads, where are you primarily selling? That type of thing as well. So I have seven deals that I've done in the Lancaster area alone from kind of Lancaster to Harrisburg. And then probably another like 17 or 18 that I've done from State College, Pennsylvania to Treasure Lake and Dubois, which is kind of like about a, almost an hour and a half span there. I really drive all over. I mean, there's nowhere I wouldn't go to do something if it was worthwhile. Um, and it's all worthwhile for me. So, but uh, in terms of like when I do social media, like targeted ads and stuff like that, mm -hmm. most of the time I kind of focus on central Pennsylvania. It really depends on the listing, um, where it's located and different things like that. Um, see, when you post something like on social media, like just a regular post, I mean, you can't really control where it goes. But basically whoever follows you, you know, Instagram wise, we'll see it in terms of Facebook. The reason why, you know, I continually shared my Facebook page, my business page to have people like it mm -hmm. is because every time somebody likes your Facebook page and they follow it, every time you make a post, it'll pop up on their feed. If they don't like and follow the page, then you have to rely on somebody that already follows you to share it, to pop it up on a different feed. So it's hard to control that way. I just try to get as many likes and follows as possible because then it'll go up on those people's feeds. And if they share it, then it kind of builds that sphere in mm -hmm. terms of the targeted ads, which is kind of different because they're paid ads. Then you can kind of go and choose the, the specific area you want, kind of what you're looking for in the way, like uh, the algorithm set up with Facebook is that you can kind of choose like buzzwords and different things like that. So if, if you've ever seen, and this is what like big companies do marketing wise, but if you've ever seen like um, how you're just with your family and you mention like something like a rocking chair or something like that, and then, or you look up a rocking chair and then like all of a sudden, like the next day or something, you'll see an ad that says rocking chair for sale or something like that. And you're yeah. like, how in the heck does that happen? Well, it's because they set up these algorithms that if you like have a buzzword or you look something up, then the company has that targeted. So it'll send, it'll basically create a targeted ad specifically for you. So that's kind of what I do on a significantly smaller scale, just with real estate, you know, so I'll like, you know, just kind of ping words like homes for sale, Zillow for sale by owner and so on down the line. So every time I know that, you know, somebody is looking at that, my ad in the specific targeted area that I chose, it's going to pop up on their feed. That's brilliant. <laughs> okay. So do you time block that time that you're doing that targeting? 
I, I could probably have that done in like 20 minutes. So I don't really time block it. It's just kind of throughout the day. It's not something that it, it's really, really simple to do. You just have to understand how to do it. Um, you know what I mean? Like, I, I think it, it's kind of hard to explain. Like, it's a very simple concept and very simple thing to do. And really anybody can do it. It's just, you kind of have to know like how social media works and how to run those ads effectively because you can still run those ads and then not choose a targeted area that makes sense for you or your business and what you're trying to do. And then it kind of is not worthwhile. So it's kind of, you have to make sure that, you know, you're choosing the key buzzwords, you're choosing the correct area, you're choosing the correct age bracket. I mean, and if you're able to do that and kind of understand how that works, then you can put in like $5 a day and you're reaching, you know, 5,000 people a day. You know what I mean? Just hypothetically. So, I mean, it's, a huge, huge thing that, um, hold on, sorry, my video clicked out here for a second. It, it's a huge thing that is, is if you can kind of grasp that concept, then it's, you can have a lot of success with it. So Christian, okay. to layer off of Jackie's time blocking question, you had said that like you block your time um, for prospecting and you do it in the morning before you start running around to all of those appointments how yeah. much time is that and um what exactly are you doing in that time um so usually i'm like kind of texting clients or prospective clients reaching out to them through social media responding to messages sending them messages one thing that i've had a ton of success with is that i'll go on to like i'll enter into um like on facebook facebook groups so if you go on to Facebook, you'll see that, you know, there's a Lancaster classified ads, East Petersburg classified ads, Strasburg classified ads. So one thing that I kind of thought outside the box to do is if you go to like Lancaster classified ads or some like a kind of a bigger group, you'll see somebody post a for sale by owner and there's like 60 agents under there commenting, oh, I can help you. I can help you. I can help you. I can help you. Well, what I've been doing is kind of targeting it a little bit more. I've been going to specific towns that I'd want to be in. Like, for example, I live in Mount Joy. So I'll go to Mount Joy Classified Ads. When somebody posts a for sale by owner or, hey, I'm looking for a real estate agent, a lot of people end up tagging all these names under there. So like if somebody posts a for sale by owner, there'll be 15 people that'll be tagged in the comments under there. Well, I know every single one of those 15 people is somebody that's looking for a home actively. So I'll message each one of them and kind of target those specific people. And then it's kind of, it's basically kind of like fishing, but all the fish are right there and it's your pond. You know what I mean? You don't have a whole lot of competition. That's a great proactive approach. Mm -hmm. That's excellent. Excellent. So do you do follow up after a sale of a property? Do you have systems in place? Like after it's closed? Certainly. Yeah. Yeah, I definitely, I do. I mean, see i know like because we talked about it before and like it, it's pretty you know it's kind of a preference thing but like i use just like a, a reminder media type thing where you know i'll just send like a magazine like every once in a while and I, I call them like i keep pretty active with it you know not like to the point where it's annoying or anything but you know every month like hey you know how's everything going like you need anything else if you ever need anything you know i'm here you know just just give me a call and, and things like that. And I'll send them like cards and stuff, you know, like if it's like a holiday or something like that. But I mean, other than that, I mean, that's pretty much what I do in terms of that type of stuff. Yeah. I'll help you with that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Christians, can you tell everybody when you started? Uh, so I got my license at the very end of December, but then uh, I didn't start really doing anything until March. Um, so I, I think I, I interviewed with, um, uh, Donna mm -hmm. in, uh, I think it was the end of January. And then I didn't, I, I forget there was something that happened. Like there was some sort of cycle with accelerate or something like that. Yeah. And I didn't really start or do anything until really March around there, kind of end of February, March. And you say you have over 20 now sold. Yeah. 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 I, I mean, I've put 26 homes under contract so far, but a, a couple of them fell through, got a couple of them back. So I think like right now it's like 22 or 23. Okay. That's excellent. Mm -hmm. 
So t do you have organization skills to track all these uh, deals that you're de doing right now? Or how do you handle all of these things? Uh, it's stressful sometimes. I'm like pretty OCD organized about different things. Like I keep everything in my notes, my phone. I use the reminder media. It's kind of like a type of CRM. So every time I put like names in there, I can kind of keep track of different things that I'm doing. Mm -hmm. um, I, I like to keep things like in notebooks or like in writing, just because like I have this like weird adamant fear in my mind where if I have my phone and my phone dies or I break my phone or something like that, where I, it's probably, you know, but just to me, I like to keep everything written down for each particular deal. Like, okay, like I need this by this day, you know, I need this, you know, and different things like that. That's just how I like to operate. So I can kind of keep there. And I like to just have that feeling of keeping everything in one place where I don't have to be like going back and forth and, you know, might have accidentally deleted something on my phone or, or something like that. Right. Okay. That's excellent. Excellent. So is there anything that you can tell us that you give us, uh, especially a lot of these new agents, like some type of advice that you could share with them? Yeah, I, I would say that the biggest thing is every single deal that you do is going to be different. And there's, and that was the biggest thing that I learned. Like you kind of come in to, you take the real estate exam and, and you kind of think, oh, okay, well now I know a lot. Mm -hmm. And realistically, I mean, to me, and I don't know how it is, has been for you guys that have been doing it for so long, but I, there wasn't a whole lot in the exam and stuff that you really learn, I guess, that I guess like little foundational things, but it's kind of a lot of, it's like experience driven and every single deal you do is different. And, um, the thing, the biggest thing that's helped me is kind of relying on older agents such as Jen, you know, you Jackie and kind of, you know, when I don't know something, I think it's okay to not know something and just ask. And then each time you go, the more experience that you get and the more deals that you do, you can kind of build off that and to the point where then you start to become comfortable. And, and because at first, like I was super nervous, like every, I remember Jackie, I was texting you like every single question the buyer or seller would ask me, I'd be like, Jackie, I don't, I don't know this. Like, and it's, and, and now it's kind of funny to look back and be like, okay, well now I'm comfortable and there's really nothing I can't handle. And uh, there's like good things and bad things that will happen, you know, when deals falling through over something, or you have to have, you know, a well drilled within a week to meet a deadline for a VA loan or something like that. And it's just kind of taking those things in and, and instead of kind of panicking and just reacting to it and figuring out a solution. Yeah, I, I definitely understood the whole well drilling thing that you explained it to me. I was like, I am highly impressed by how much you got done. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, all that taken care of, luckily. That's awesome. That is awesome. Christian, where would you say the majority of your business has come from? Like when you kind of look at, you know, all of those deals that you've done and that you're, you know, you have in progress, where do you feel like the majority of those had come from? Is it like is it your sphere of influence? Is it your targeted social media? Like, is it your network that you're leveraging? Where do you kind so of account one thing for I it? I forgot to touch on initially that actually that reminded me of is, is sending out personalized note cards. So Jackie said that initially, that was like one of the first things, I think like in the first couple of classes we had in, in the uh, Accelerate training that we kind of went over. And, and I'm going to be honest, like in my mind, I was like, how I'm going to be able to do that. Like, that seems kind of like a lengthy process to do like, you know what I mean? And, uh, my perspective on that, like 180 changed. And the reason being is, is I, I still think a lot of my business comes from targeted ads and social media. I would say probably like 65 to 70%, but a lot of the stuff has come from sending out note cards. So when I, the, I first started, um, the first week that I kind of like really started in the accelerate training. And after we had that class with Jackie, I uh, went to note card cafe that night and um, uh, kind of developed my own card that I wanted with a personalized message. Um, just kind of an overview um, of what I wanted to say. And then um, with each, each card I would send out to uh, uh, some business cards and then I would write a personalized message as well. Mm -hmm. that wasn't like pre-typed or anything like that. Like I would, I would handwrite it. And I sent that out to probably 400 families, people. I mean, everyone that I possibly knew, everyone that I, at one point or another, I react, or, or, you know, interacted with and kind of had their address. And probably I got, you know, 10 to 15 people 
just contact me right after that being like, Oh, Hey, you know, actually we were looking to buy and you know, we know you, so, you know, we'd want to go with you. But, um, the biggest listing I have is a, is a listing in Clearfield that, you know, it's going to take a little bit to sell because it's kind of a different type of area. I mean, if it was here, it'd be a multi-million dollar house, but back in Clearfield, I mean, it's beautiful home. Different like, market, <laughs> whole different yeah. market. And uh, it's yeah. an $850,000 house. And I got that listing because um, a guy told me, he's like, Hey, you know, this prominent guy in town might be selling his house. Eventually he's moving to Hilton Head, South Carolina. It wouldn't hurt to kind of, you know, contact him. And keep in mind, I've never talked to this guy before. Never. I mean, I think I've seen him once and said hi to him. Um, so I wrote him a note card and everything like that. Just saying, Hey, you know, uh, just wanted to introduce myself. My name is Christian Lesser. I'm a realtor with Berkshire Hathaway. I actually grew up just down the street from your house. Um, so if you're ever, you know, interested in selling or, or just want to talk, you know, I'd be interested in meeting with you. Selling your business cards. Well, I didn't think anything would ever come of it. Um, two weeks later, he gives me a call and he says, Hey, you know, I really, really liked your, your, the card that you sent. He's like, nobody's done that before. He's like, I've had realtors and stuff like try to, you know, get me to sell your house all the time, but I like how you went about it. He's like, I want you to list my house. And then he's like, on top of that, he's like, I have a uh, uh, property in uh, 60 acres, which is like, when this actually comes up, this will be probably the best, if not one of the best, like um, land for hunting and can and fishing in Pennsylvania. And he owned that and people were trying to buy from him for years. He's like, I want you to list that too. So I actually bought that and uh, it's going to be subdivided and uh, we're going to build camps built to suit and sell them off. It's surrounded by 180,000 acres of state game lands and I already have like 15 buyers for each, like a waiting list. So it's going to be pretty cool with that. Wow. He also told me he's like, and I, I know I won't be able to do this. I have to refer it out because I don't have my North Carolina license, but he owns a, uh, four acres from the beach in North Carolina. He owns a, a property that's approved. I think it's like another 60 acres approved for 145 townhomes. He's like, I want you to, you know, help me out with that too, to get it sold. So that uh, all just from sending a card, you know what I mean? And, and so that was pretty awesome. So thank you, Jackie, for that. Hey, Christian, man, when I told you, you have to brush up on your, your penmanship, I meant yeah. it and look what, look, it worked, right? It took me like 45 minutes to write because I was so focused on the handwriting. I know. <laughs> <laughs> that's why i feel like we need to need to do penmanship classes next <laughs> yeah, <sure. laughs> so def job. definitely the note cards um you know how else are you leveraging your network like one thing um to me that has really stood out about you is like hey you live in mount joy but like mount joy is one of your focus market areas like you have not you know, you've not really come in and been like, well, I didn't grow up here. I'm not from here. Like you, you're willing to work the area and build a network here. So one, tell us how you're doing that. And then two, you know, you're also working where you grew up and where you came from. So you have really taken advantage of, you know, having one MLS, you know, that has in our broad market space, you know, working through, you know, getting into another MLS and just overcoming obstacles because of wanting to take advantage of that network. Yeah, I think that, I mean, this is just my personal opinion. I just think that to me, I, I enjoy doing it. And if there's something I don't know, if there's an area I don't know, like I'll figure it out. And like, I've never kind of had that mentality where I've been in, in anything that I've done to be like, oh, well, I can't do this because of this or, or anything like that. It just everything, no matter what it is, like if something comes up, I'll figure it out and, and just go from there. So that's why I've never had an issue saying, hey, you know, can you show me this house in Strasburg or can you come up to Reading? Like, you know, I don't know those areas specifically, but it's not something that I can't figure out and learn from and be better for it later on in real estate. You know what I mean? So that's kind of been my mentality and my thought process and kind of why I wanted to go that route. That's right. There's money to be made all over PA. Exactly. That's why it's a PA license. Pittsburgh, Philadelphia, Erie, you name it. Yep. Yep. Great. Awesome. That is great. Um, okay. So what do you do as far as asking, do you ask for referrals from all the clients that you work with? Um, I don't ask for referrals. I just kind of let it, you know, it's kind of how you directed us to do like after we send it, you know, 
they get the home or, you know, the deal closes or anything like that. I'll kind of, you know, send a card saying if you or anybody you know is ever selling, you know, feel or you ever need anything else, feel free to contact me. And then I kind of try to get them to, you know, during that time when you tell them they got the house or they just closed and they're kind of in that excited kind of euphoria stage there, kind of be like, hey, you know, if you know anybody else buying or selling or anything like that. <clears throat> um, that's uh, when I kind of take the opportunity to, to kind of do that and talk about them or ask for a positive review or something like that. And I've never had an issue with that. I mean, usually they're, they're happy to do so. And I have gotten referrals from clients because of things like that. So it's, it's yeah. that's basically kind of how I go about it. Yeah. Just remember, Christian, you're never going to hear somebody say, when you say, can you do me a favor? Yeah. Would you mind handing out my business cards for me? I work by referral. Mm -hmm. Okay. They're yeah. not going to say no to you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You're a great agent. And I'm sure that if you ask, it will be given to you. So please make sure you're doing that. Okay. Yeah. Everybody right. should be doing that. Um, let me see. So a couple questions came in the chat box. So while I'm reading these, those of you who are sitting here with questions, add them in yep. um, and we can kind of go through them. So I'm going to you know, kind of pair up Jaden and Steph's question because I already know the answer there. Um, so Christian one, do you have an assistant? And then since I know that answer, like how, because of that answer, how do you stay organized? So kind of tackle both um, of those. <laughs> no, I don't have an assistant. Um, sometimes I wish I did, but uh, I just am like super organized with the things that I do. Just like, I mean, <laughs> like just you know writing everything down if i have something to do i'll write it down i'll kind of will cross it off with every single thing that i do i'll kind of every single day i'll have a list um of things that i need to do for different things the deadlines i have to meet con or you know things that need signed you know whether it be addendums with the title team or the settlement team um with the lenders and different things like that every time i just go right down the list until everything's checked off kind of the same thing i did in college i mean realistically I mean, when I was at Boston College and the University of Central Florida, I mean, I've just kind of always had those habits because and a lot of it honestly stemmed from playing football in college because you're like up at 545 in the morning. You're not done till like 10 at night. You have study hall, you have schoolwork, you have meetings, you have you have classes, you know, you have to learn to plays. And that's just kind of how I've always been with stuff like that probably is where I learned that is just kind of every single thing that I needed to do for the day, I'd write down and then kind of cross it off as you go along. Then at the end of the day, it's kind of when I relax, when the list is completely all checked through. Then it's the same thing over again the next day. <laughs> <laughs> do you get any time for yourself, Christian? Yeah, I still have fun. Yeah. My roommate right. has a good time here in Lancaster. It's a fun city to be in. Good. I want, I'd like to hear that. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so question for you also is when you post Facebook ads, are you using the pre-made ads from Berkshire Hathaway, Trish is asking. I have used um, a couple times uh, the, the ads that have already been made by Berkshire Hathaway. Um, like I use like their header and stuff like that. Like I like some of the headers, like the graphics like Berkshire Hathaway makes and sometimes I'll take those and use those. But most of the time, I kind of like doing my own thing, kind of making it a little more organic, like depending on, um, you know, if I have a specific listing myself, like I like to post out. Like what I do, like in terms of like targeted social media ads, Facebook, is basically I'll kind of take the best pictures of uh, some of the listings that I have that are kind of more eye popping. And I'll kind of create a collage and then I'll create kind of what's called like a lead form pretty much. So when I run the targeted ads, so it, when somebody clicks on the link and then you can kind of type whatever you want, be like, Hey, if you know, or, you know, interested in seeing what your home is worth or buying or selling and different kind of things that are just kind of catchy. Um, not saying that's why I say I'm just doing hypotheticals. Um, so then somebody clicks on that link and then basically they have to fill out their name, uh, I think their email, their phone number and kind of just like a, and that's pretty much it. And it'll grow, go to me directly. I have it hooked up. It'll automatically go to a direct message to my Facebook account and I'll respond. I think my like response times like under like two minutes, like every single time somebody does, I'll immediately respond because I don't want them to go anywhere else. Um, you know, cause it's kind of like how the consumer's thought process when you kind of contact somebody for something they don't respond for hours or days you're kind of like all right well I tried might as well go to somebody else so I try to respond as quickly as possible kind of in my 
for the lack of a better term, kind of an analogy of you got the fish on the hook, then kind of yank it, make sure the hook's in there. Yeah. Um, so that's kind of what I do with that. And then once I have that person on my message box, then I kind of develop, you know, see how they are as a person, what they're looking for, what area, what price range, and, and so on from there. And then uh, go, go from that point. That's great. All right. So Tom Slaughter is asking, how have you addressed the you are a new agent statements from buyers and sellers? Have you gotten that much? Uh, yeah, I get that a lot. And my response to that is always, I, I never tell them that I have been doing real estate for only six months. The, yep. I tell them, usually I focus on, uh, I'll kind of transition the conversation to my experience and my background and how, you know, that I have experience in my dad's also a real estate developer on the side. I'll kind of transition to that. Like, Hey, I've been around real estate my entire life. I understand the process. I've been around new home builds, renovations, building materials. So I have a lot of experience in terms of that. Um, and I kind of just transition a conversation to that and, and then kind of build on key points that I can help them with. Like, Hey, you know, I, I can, you know, help social media a lot. It really depends on what the buyer specifically asking me, you know, the kind of the vibes that I've gotten from them initially, like in what kind of tone they're asking. It's, I feel like it's kind of like a personality and feel thing. Mm -hmm. uh, but that's kind of how I address that question. But yeah, I get that question actually a lot. And I've never had an issue with that so far. Uh, I, I've actually never, uh, knock on wood, but I haven't yet where I've met somebody in person that uh, I haven't gotten the listing or, or represent them as a buyer's agent. I think, yeah. I think you gotta, like you said, and like you're doing, it's that kill them with confidence. Like yeah. if you know your stuff, meaning like, you know, the market, you know, the stats, like you can get them through that transaction and you deliver that with confidence. There's nothing left to question. Um, so I think, you know, you know, your stuff, know your market areas, know the stats, knows, know the average sales price, the days on market. Like when you come in and they mention, oh yeah, I, did you, you know, somebody down the street, they sold their house and you can come back with, you're right. They did. It was on the market. It sold in five days. It sold at this price. Like when you can deliver all of that, I mean, that's, you know, where you get to where you've gotten to Christian. Yeah. And, and, and the biggest thing too, with going to those meetings and stuff is being like prepared. I mean, I feel like the one thing that I do, like one of my strong points is kind of when somebody asks me something I don't know, I'll kind of, you know, I'll be honest with them. Like I never like, you know, tell them something that I don't know or for sure or something like that, but I'm very, very, very prepared in any meeting that I go into, you know, I kind of think outside the box of, okay, well, what if they ask me this, 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 that, or that, you know, so I, I kind of have an understanding of a pretty good overview. Mm -hmm. And a lot of that I kind of get from the conversation before me with them, whether it be a phone call or kind of text, I'll kind of, you know, ask them a little more questions about, you know, I'll kind of have an understanding of who they are as a person and what their personality is like almost before going into the meeting. So I can kind of just be a little more comfortable and, you know, things that you can say, things you can't say, things that, you know, does that make sense? Kind of what yeah. I'm saying? Yeah. So that's kind of how I go about that. All right. Great. So another question came in from Stephanie. Do you have a goal number for notes and calls for prospecting every day? Um, I don't, I have just at this point kind of done what I felt comfortable with, you know, um, a lot of times I'll send the cards out to people that have direct messaged me on Facebook. When I first started, I kind of had a goal to uh, try to send like, you know, 10 every day, depending. I mean, a lot, see, a lot of it's kind of like with cards, it was weird because you don't want to like repetitively send people cards or anything like that. So it's kind of like, I wouldn't send duplicate cards or anything like that it was just kind of people that I, I basically would think of okay well who haven't I sent something to yet and kind of in that regard mm -hmm. um that's kind of how I went about that um what was the second part of that question could you could you repeat that one more time yeah so I, I do you have a goal number for not just notes but calls also for prospecting each day yeah. In terms of call. So that's kind of what I did when I first started out. Now it's kind of a little different for me where I've kind of transitioned to kind of, I have so much going on right now. Sometimes it's a little hard to handle like continual new things, which I always do continual new things, but I've kind of just, 
you know, focus more on the targeted ads when somebody, you know, wants to message me and is looking for something specifically, that's kind of what I focus on now. And I'll call those people, but I'm not like actively, my prospecting is more kind of like methodical and like thought out in terms of like, I'm, I'm directing to people that I, I, like, I'm not like making cold calls or anything like that. If that's what the question is, like, I'm not like sending out cards to people. I have no idea who they are. Like, so I'm more so focused on people like my sphere of influence at this point. I've kind of transitioned like into people that I know that I know are looking for homes that have reached out to me directly or have I've spoken to already. Okay. Are, you, are all these people in your CRM with home sale? The, uh, uh, I, I, they're not, I have everything in the CRM with, it's not like, it's like a, uh, kind of a CRM with, uh, uh, reminder media. And all I have to do is basically just download it and I can upload it to home. sale. I just haven't done that to this point. Because you need an assistant. <laughs> we'll talk. Okay, so uh, Irma has a question for you. For someone who's just getting started and does not have sold under contract or listing links um, and is not very social media comfortable, what buzzwords work when posting on social media? And I'll even like expand that. Like Christian, think back to like before you had your first deal to post, like what were yeah. you, what did you start out with posting because you didn't have that inventory at all? Uh, yeah, so that was when I was focusing on posting stuff about myself personally to get people to know who I was and, and who I am as a person. You know, I, I kind of posted um, stuff about, uh, I think the very first post that I made for each thing was basically kind of my uh, picture with Berkshire Hathaway and then kind of my background, my bio, um, you know, where I've been, who I am as a person, you know, what I can offer, you know, my experience and different things like that. And, and that's kind of what I focused on initially until I had that first listing. Then I kind of transitioned later on to, mm -hmm. you know, what, uh, I've been doing and, and different things like that. So that in terms of like posting on social media, like buzzwords, you're not, unless you're running a targeted ad, you're not like really running buzzwords or anything like that. You know, when I meant like buzzwords and different things like that, that's when you're specifically running like an actual targeted ad. Um, that's a paid ad. So a targeted ad is a paid ad. Um, and you can choose however much you want. You can do like a dollar a day up to hundreds of dollars a day. Um, I, I just do the minimal amount because I, I know how to do it. And I think you can kind of get more bang for your buck doing that. Um, but that, that, yeah. So the, when I say buzzwords, that was more specifically with running paid targeted ads in terms of making social media posts. I mean, if you haven't had any deals yet, the first thing that I would do that I did was I was more so in the process of creating my business page, creating my business Instagram page, you know, kind of gaining a following, kind of, you know, make organically gaining a following and kind of uh, just posting about myself personally, about the company that I work for, letting people know that, hey, I am a real estate agent now, I'm in real estate, this is what I can offer, this is the company I'm with, this is the, what they can offer and, and things like that. Do you use video as, as well? I have not used video yet. I want to. Um, I just have taken a few videos and didn't think they looked as professionally made as I want them to be if I was going to post them on my social media. So I'm still trying to kind of figure out that process. I actually talked to a kid in my town who does like videos professionally. So I'm probably going to work something out and do some things like that I can continually use. Um, uh, but I haven't like used videos yet specifically. Right. I, I kind of caution you to be not so professional, like in those terms, but rather be yourself Christian, yeah. because I think that what well, you're I, I meant more so in terms of like the lighting, like, yeah. yeah, I meant more so like in terms of like graphic graphically, yeah. um, I didn't want to like put a blurry video of me up there talking about real estate, yeah. you know, I want to need a halo light. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> like Eddie says. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> So they could see your wonderful features, right? All right. <laughs> Does anybody else have any other questions? Uh, have you tried Video Licious? Melissa's asking. I have it downloaded. I've looked into it. It looks like a really cool feature. I just have not used it yet. Yeah, you should really. Well, I know time is of the essence with you. So, um, yeah, maybe in the middle of the night. <laughs> 
Yeah. <laughs> you can mess with that. I know that you work a lot of crazy hours. So um, do yeah, you block I mean, out? What's that? Yeah, do you block out your, your personal time? Do you do that? Like personally with like, just like my family. personal life? Yeah, yeah, you like your family and your friends. Oh, and yeah, stuff. yeah. I, I mean, I'll always, um, like right now, I'm sure like if I had a family, like later on, it's a little bit different. Like right now, I'm a single guy. Like I have a Mount Joy. I live with a roommate. Like I have a good time. Like it just, mm -hmm. you know, I go, I still go up with friends. I hit the gym every single day, you know, whenever I have free time. Like I still completely take time to myself to do things, whether it be at the end of the night. I have like a really, like the weirdest sleep schedule ever where I wake up super early and go to bed super late just because my body can handle that right now so i'm sure when i get older that'll be different but um so usually a lot of things i do like personally like or end up being like later in the night or different things like that but yeah i still hang out with my family i go to dinner with my family you know i meet with friends go out with friends friday saturday nights you know different things still go to happy hour i mean so so yeah <laughs> I, I haven't had like an issue with that right now um or anything like that. That's that hasn't been an issue for me at all. That's good. I'm glad. So Are you, you were so you, that, so yeah. Christian, you answered that question with yes because like what you just said is you did you time block what's important to you. Like you time block and make sure you get to go to the gym in the morning. Um, so it it may look it's going to look different for everybody, but I think the key is you know what's important to you in terms of your personal time you are time blocking that too. Yeah, I think that's super subjective to like what you have going on in your life. You know what I mean? If you have like three kids, if you have like, if you're married, obviously that's a completely different scenario than what I live right now. You know what I mean? Like I'm a single guy, like I can wake up, at, go to the gym, you know, come back, go get drinks with friends in the afternoon. I mean, that's a lot of people can't do that. You know, it's just, it really depends on you, your personal situation in terms of that type of stuff. But yeah, obviously like family and everything is by far the most important, you know what I mean? And then like real estate to me is second, but like real estate is still a very important aspect for me. Like, for example, if I'm like sitting here watching TV with my family or something, like I'm taking that phone call. Like, I mean, it, it's just kind of like, in my, like, I'm always not going to take the phone call or anything like that. Like, it just, does that kind of make sense what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Like, I'm not going to, like, be just watching a football game with my friends and be like, oh, well, this is friend time with I'm just got to watch a Steeler game. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, so that's just how I am personally, though. Do you wear a lot of Berkshire Hathaway gear? I mean, when you go to the gym and all that kind of stuff, are you wearing a T-shirt or anything like that? I do not. And I actually had no Berkshire Hathaway gear until, like, a month ago. And I just <laughs> bought some collared shirts. And I need to buy like some sweatshirts and some t-shirts and stuff like that. But uh, yeah. I want some of the gear. I like the Berkshire Hathaway gear. I just, uh, actually it was my dad who said that he was like, cause I was going just like in a straight black Nike t-shirt or not uh -huh. just, like, collared shirt yeah. um, to every listing and stuff like that with, and he was like, why do you not just get a Berkshire Hathaway shirt or something like that? That would make a lot more sense. And I was like, I don't know why I didn't do that beforehand, but you're right. So that night I ordered like five uh, collared shirts and I just kind of switch them out. I'm proud of you. That's why I just to your dad. Yeah. Yeah. And I mean, the gym, like there's an agent in um, our West York office. Like he definitely does like the, you know, the t-shirt cut off tea tank, whatever he's wearing to the gym, the same thing. Like he is you know, a walk it, walking branded billboard of I am a realtor. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, I definitely need to get on that and go to the, uh, uh, the website there and buy some more, uh, some more Berkshire Hathaway apparel there. Any other questions that you guys have? And then Christian, anything else that like you would kind of give them as, you know, thoughts, things to work on, like ideas to share, advice to kind of keep going. So in terms of just kind of advice to keep going, I would say yeah. just kind of be you, you know what I mean? Find out like sometimes you might not be the, your, your strong suit might not be the best with calling people. It might not be social media or different things, but kind of find your niche kind of find what your strengths are and then kind of build off that, you know, cause some realtors I see like focus on, you know, different things, you know, whether it be for sale by owners or, or different, you know, aspects of real estate like that, just kind of find what you're comfortable with, 
what you can build off of. And then if you can find those building blocks and continue to build, then I think eventually you're going to be successful and eventually you're going to, you know, become more comfortable and well-rounded and then you can kind of go from there. That's kind of what I did. I just kind of focused on like, in, in terms of back to what you said earlier, you're like, okay, well, you don't know this area. You don't, you know, no, you're not from Lancaster, different things like that. So what I did is kind of just like, a, I thought, okay, well, I know Mount Joy. I know, you know, Mannheim. I've worked there. I know Lidditz and then kind of focused on those areas and then kind of ex created the building blocks and expanded and expanded. And then now I feel like I'm at a point where I'm comfortable and, and that's kind of what has led me to this point so far. That's great. Um, Jaden would like to know, do you do client gifts at all? You probably haven't even thought of this yet. Have you? Yeah, I do client gifts all the time. And I actually yeah. like kind of go above and beyond like with different things like that. It really, kind of something I like to do is I'll kind of like during the process of buying and selling, I'll kind of find out different things they like, um, kind of, you know, not like making it known, just kind of like, uh, um, uh, different things. Like for example, I had this, uh, home that we, we bought in, uh, Ephrata PA. Um, that's actually the first deal I ever did. And I remember this lady was like obsessed with flowers and she always wanted like one of those like whiskey bar barrels, but like yes. ran up for flowers and different things like that. And they like couldn't find it anywhere. So um, I knew that they wanted that. And she was, she was a very a, a lot, a older woman. And uh, uh, so the day of settlement, and it was a huge pain to get it there too, because I had to do it by myself. I had to like go up and grab a neighbor to help me get out of my truck. Um, we got her like a whiskey barrel, had it sawed off, like uh, planted up with like all her favorite flowers. Cause I, she, she would always talk about what her favorite flowers were. And she like loved that. Like it was the best thing. And um, so I do different things like that. I'll kind of go above and beyond. Like I don't get them like a pen or anything like that and say, Hey, congratulations. Here's a Berkshire Hathaway pen. Uh, yeah. But if you ever know anybody, give me another call. You know what I mean? So yeah. I kind of go above and beyond um, in terms of stuff like that. Cause I want to create like a memorable thing too, that, you know, something that's kind of be like, I don't want to get them like kind of like a one-time gift where, you know, like a bottle of wine where they drink the wine, like, okay, cool. Throw it away. That's it. Like I want to kind of give them something that's going to have meaning to them that really isn't going to have my name on it. Just something that's personalized to them that they can use and keep. And then every time they look at it or eventually maybe down the road, if they, you know, buy or sell or know anybody that's buying or selling, they'll be like, Hey, you know what? That guy was actually pretty cool. And he went above and beyond and got me that flower. There's all my favorite flowers in that whiskey barrel. And, and, you know, we couldn't find it. So, you know, let's give him a call. And so that's kind of my thought process on that. Yeah. Christian, uh, what that, you know, what that says to me is like, you listened. I mean, for her, like I'm putting myself in her shoes, you know, it was a, it was a meaningful gift. You listened, like you heard me, you knew it was something that was going to be meaningful to me. So like you, like you went above and beyond to do it and it will be a conversation piece because it meant so much to that person. So I think it says a couple things, you know, because of how important it was and how you are doing certain things for certain people because of what you're hearing from them. I think that's really important and it's going to make a significant difference in the long run because of how you're doing it. Yeah, absolutely. And that's how I feel too. So thank you. That's excellent. That's excellent. Christian that, yeah, it shows you're using both ears and only one mouth, which means you're listening more than you speak, right? Yep. That's right. exactly what I tell you guys. Always listen more than you speak and you're doing such a fabulous job. I'm really excited about this. All right. Any other questions that anybody has? I mean, I'm sure you're like, wow, this guy's amazing. <laughs> I know Gary is excited. <laughs> He's like, this is incredible. Wait, I bet the ladies are saying, wait a minute. A wait a minute. Says, what? <laughs> that can't be right. <laughs> That's great. That is great. <laughs> We are so thankful to have had this opportunity, Christian. I don't know if anybody else would like to chime in, but um, I'm really thankful that he took the time out of his very hectic schedule to just sit and talk to us and give us a little bit of background of what he's been doing and how he does it. I mean, in six short months to have well over 20 deals to me is just incredible. And uh, I can just imagine what next year is going to look like. And I hate to tell you this, Christian, but come December, you know, come January, the whole thing sets, resets again, and you start all over from the beginning. Yep. 
but your pipeline has to keep growing. So you have to remember to keep that up. Um, definitely, I had a, um, a call today and they said, actually, this is the time that we should be actually, uh, October to March is farming season, okay? And we should be really farming for the crops that are coming in those coming months because without that, we won't make a harvest, okay? Um, and then obviously come April is when we're going to be, you know, getting that harvest. So uh, you just want to keep pushing forward. And uh, I definitely want to catch up with you again, Christian, and uh, be able to continue the conversation for sure. Absolutely. I wanted to actually throw in too how awesome yeah. I think it is that you have re-evaluated your business as you've been going on. I think that was the biggest takeaway when I was asking you about the note cards and the, goal, the goals that you had for them and for the phone calls, that there is a distinct difference between how you had to jumpstart and get started early on and then recognizing where those strengths were and what was working for you and then adjusting those prospecting routines to account for that. And I think that, you know, I, I don't want that to get lost in this conversation, that it's really important um, that as you're going along and you've tried everything and things are up and moving, you have to adjust. I mean, you've got so much going on now that you really have to hone in on those things that turn the most profit for you. So good job. Thank you. I appreciate it. And think about what was going on in the nation over those first three months of your licensing. Yeah. Yeah. Made it tough. You know, that, that talk about a mountain decline and, you know, there have been agents that use that as an excuse to sit back and relax for a while. And now they're suffering for, it. um, I give you nothing but congratulations and you got a great future ahead of you. You really Thank do. You. I appreciate that. Yes, definitely. I'm so excited to see what next year brings. It's time to start our business plans, people, because that is so important to get your business plans down on paper, your goals down on paper, so that next year will be double of what you did this year. Yeah. Okay. Yes, it's Christian's kind of scary. It's well over double, isn't it, Christian? Christian is going to, oh, yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> I sent yeah. out just so you guys know how important this is to Christian, I, I sent out um, a Google form survey, you know, what's your goals for next year? And he was one of the first three to return his goals for next year. So he, he knows he's got a plan. Yep. That's excellent, Christian. You're just, yep, you're gonna be extremely successful. Thank you, I appreciate it. I hope you always remember me. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much for giving me the opportunity to talk today too. I really appreciate it. Yeah, thank you. Um, thank you, Jackie, for moderating. You know, you did a fabulous job kind of pulling all of those details out. And Christian, thank you so much for your willingness to kind of share and, you know, kind of look back at, you know, what you've done, what's worked, what hasn't worked and um, continue to, like Steph pointed out, evaluate it, reevaluate it. Um, so, you know, I... I'm going to continue to, you know, watch your journey. We are all here to support you and are very proud of you. So thank you for taking the time to kind of share your feedback and thoughts and ideas with our Accelerate group today. We appreciate it. Yep. Thank you guys. Awesome. Thank you guys for tuning in. Have a great day and keep going. Amen. There thank you go. You.